Today I'll be talking about, well, Svelte Kid. Before I start, who am I? Right, so, uh, my name is Li Hao. Uh, I'm a front end developer. Uh, at work, I'm a front end developer at Shopee. Um, outside of work, yeah, as mentioned, I do a little bit of, like, uh, contribute a bit on, into Svelte. Um, I have like social medias like Twitter, uh, but most importantly, I have a YouTube channel, uh, which I yeah you know which I did some of the try to make some contents to YouTube you know some some things that you don't find it of as much for example like try to break down on like how module bundles work or like how do you create like a client side routing library right um, if you're interested do check them out so. Before we talk about Svelte kids, let's talk about Svelte. So I guess anyone here, maybe a show of hands, how many of you have used or uh, heard of Svelte before? Woo! Okay, that's great. So how many of you have like used Svelte before? Yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. Okay, so how about how many of you like has been uh, has used like Svelte at work? Okay, <laughs> that's great. That's great as well. Okay, so I think. I, I probably can quickly skip this because like I was I think like because if this is like my first video that I watched about Svelte and that get, get me into like you know check out like how Svelte actually works it's an amazing video I, I guess like most of you have heard about Svelte and probably you know about it um, there's another video that came out recently about Svelte it's a Svelte documentary I can search that online um, yeah it, so you want to learn like how Svelte was created like about the Svelte community and stuff like that, and myself was kind of like mentioned in the video. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, if you want to learn Svelte, uh, like I think like some of you has used, some have heard about it, but have not used it. If you want to know, like learn more about it, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, still, like plug, like you know, like I've I've made like a lot of like videos on YouTube about Svelte. You can check them out. Uh, but just to give you like. Just to make sure that everyone kind of like have a sense of how it feels like. This is a Svelte component. Um, you see that app.svelte. So it's a single file component. Uh, you have everything. Uh, so it looks like HTML, right? And that's fair. The syntax is very much stayed close to like HTML. You have a script block where you can write JavaScript. And you have like HTML elements. And you have a style block where you can have CSS. Right? And then do note, like, within the HTML, you have like, curly brackets that can have expressions. So you can use variables that you declare in the script tag over here. So here you will probably see on the screen, like, hello world. To make it interactive, you can add event listeners. Right? You can add, like, so you can have on click and then have uh, you can pass in like, functions from the uh, JavaScript that you declare. And what makes Svelte so cool and a lot of people like about Svelte is that it is so easy to make changes to um, to your code uh, to, to to the variables, right? So to modify like the counter, you just plus plus. Although decrement, I'm not sure why it's also plus plus, but you can make you can you, you just make changes like like how you would do in JavaScript. There's no other functions like set state or stuff like that. You just make change to a variable and it will reflect immediately. So how this works? This works by um, so Svelte itself is not just a framework, it, 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 has, it is like a compiler-based framework. It, within itself, there's a Svelte compiler that compiles your code, you write your Svelte code into JavaScript on the right. If you try to screen and zoom in, you probably will see um, it compiled to, um, yeah, still small, very small, but you roughly can see like it compiles to like DOM operations on how you create like the button element, how do you set text content and stuff like that. Right? So and so this sets like Svelte apart with other frameworks where uh, some frameworks does like virtual DOM, you know, you render a certain like a DOM tree structure and then you compare and then you update to a DOM. But what we have over here in Svelte is that it, it manipulates the DOM elements through operations and all those has already been generated for you. Right? So this is the code that you just you just send to the users, right? So, yeah, and, and we'll try to generate as optimized and small as much as possible. So if you're interested about like this process, um, I do write some like blog series about like how you can compile Svelte in your head, figure out like how this maps to that, uh, the Svelte code maps to JavaScript code. 
Um, yeah, you can check that out as well. So enough about all my like, things that I write and make. Let's talk about Svelte. Okay, so a lot of you have not used Svelte it at work, right? And a lot of people have been asking, like, is, how, how, do, uh, is, like how do you use... Can I, like, is, is Svelte ready for production? Of course it is. Uh, but you know, like, when we mean production ready uh, in this day and age, a lot of times when we think about this, uh, not just client-side rendering, uh, you want to set up like server-side rendering, and then it maybe involves like hydration, and then how do you do like routing, how do you like prefetching, lazy loading, like all this stuff, right? Uh, oops, sorry. All this stuff. And also like say, uh, how do you, um, you know, serve, like deploy your like, style application to the cloud providers, how do you use cloud providers to, you know, uh, maybe render your server-side rendered Svelte application through, like, say, serverless functions, uh, a lot of setups, right? Or you, maybe it just works on the block side, how do you do static site generations? A lot, a lot of this, right? And if you come from a world, like, say, from React, then you probably know that maybe you can reach out to frameworks like Next.js to do, do this for you. Or maybe, like, Nux.js for Vue, right? So what's that equivalent of things, a uh, frameworks to do uh, for Svelte? If you are a very early adop adopter of Svelte, you probably have heard about this Sapper. It's like our, it's the Svelte team's very first attempt on trying to solve this problem, trying to create a, a tool for you to, to build Svelte application. Um, but it was a few, it was created a few years ago, and I think like if you been in JavaScript, well, like do JavaScript for quite a while, you probably know that, um, like I think recently there's a lot of imp uh, a lot of like advances and improvements, a lot of things that was trying out in the past few years in, say, server-side rendering, or maybe, um, say, like, island architecture and whatever, right? So there's a lot of things that we are slowly improving and learning. So, uh, so and now, at this point in time, the Svelte team decided that, okay, we, with all the things that we've learned, um, instead of, like, introduce breaking changes and break this apart and do a new thing, let's Start from scratch, right? That's what we love to do, right? Start from scratch. So that's where Svelte Kids comes in, right? That's the successor of like Sapper. So this is the thing that you will use in future. Um, so before I move beyond this part of talking about Svelte Kit, I do have a word of warning, um, which is that Svelte Kit at this point of time is still like beta. Uh, what that means is that Svelte team cares a lot about breaking changes. It doesn't want you to. It doesn't want to ship something as stable that will ship something to a stable version that will break your app, right? So at this point, we are still trying to be. We are still in beta because still from time to time we realize that actually there, uh, there's to to do all the things that we set out to do. Um, there are things that we have to break, like some APIs that has to change or uh, rethink about it. And along the way, we realize okay, we need to do this and that. So that's why it's still in beta. So I realized that a lot of things that I'm going to talk about later about Svelkit may not hold true in stable version. So just like this, I guess today's talk is more of like give you a rough preview about like Svelkit, the know about existence of Svelkit, what are the things that you can do, and yeah, so that you know you prepare yourself for the future. I guess. So yep, with that out of the way, uh, to create a Svelkit app, you run npm create Svelte at latest, right? So what this does is that Oops. It will, when you run it, uh, you will use the Svelte template generator to generate a Svelte kit template. So it goes through a uh, prompt where you ask you that you want to use like demo app or create a uh, type Do you want to do linting? Do you want to prettier? Do you want to use uh, Playwright to do testing? And you answer all that question and then you just, um, and then it's generated. So you go to into that folder, you npm install. It takes a while. Um, then when you, you run npm run dev to start the dev server, right? As soon as you it started, it's quite fast. You have a working application over here, and then, yeah, this, this just works. So how you notice that, um, so for, for the video, I didn't do any fast forward, right? I just pre-recorded it so that I don't have to do it here, you know? Um, so it's quite fast. Probably it's because it's small. But it's also because it's powered by VIT, which is like the next generation front-end tooling. Um, and also paired with the Svelte HMR, which, uh, which is uh, you have like a very fast uh, dev 
server startup as well as a hot module reloading, like instant hot module reloading. So I'm gonna play you another video of like how that works. Right? So here, you see on the left, as I type, as I click save, right, the, the thing on the right just changed immediately. So it, it's like it's instantaneous, right? Change and then updates immediately. So I go to like a counter, um, maybe I try to you know, uh, make some changes, say set the counts to some value. As soon as I hit save, it's updated. Right? I can come here and update the increments, save, and it's updated. I can you know, increment by three. Right? So that's the hot module reloading um, of Svelte Kit. So when you create Svelte Kit um, the, through the template, you have these folders. Right? So the first thing is the .svelte Kit folder. Um, it's auto-generated. So just please don't touch it, but you can go in and take a look, but just, you know, uh, everything is auto-generated from there. So yeah, just, just, just keep it as is. Um, and next thing is the source folder, which I'll be talking about it later on. Then in, if you look at package.json, you have dependencies like Svelte and like Svelte kit. And if you look at the scripts, you have the dev and build to run the dev server and do the build. And it's just using vids to build and dev for you. So, so there's nothing, no magic over here. If you look at uh, Svelte config, this is the one file that you does configuration for Svelte. Um, yep. And then you have TS config, where if you choose TypeScript, you get this file. Uh, do note that you see it extends from a TypeScript config file from the Svelte kit folder, which means that if you make any changes to Svelte config, you know, it sets some custom alias or different things. Either the TypeScript config will update itself because it extends from the file that is generated from the Svelkit folder. Right, so that's roughly that you roughly things that you get. So next thing we'll go into is the file based router. So in this uh, in the file based what what's file based routing? Right? Um, it means that routing, like uh, it is based on the file or folder structure of your project. Let me give you an example. If you try to build a CTJS website, right, and you want to create a schedule page, so you want this page, then you go to routes folder, create a file called uh, schedule.svelte, this component, then whatever is in the component will be used to render that schedule page. Um, if you want to have a ticket buying page, then ticket slash buy, right, so you create a folder called ticket, you create a buy component, then that's your ticket buying page. Right, and if you want to create speakers profile, you have speakers and slash name, speakers name, right? Uh, if you if you don't, you, this part is dynamic, right? And you don't want to create just create each component for each speakers. So you want to have some sort of dynamic in there. You want to have some sort of like dynamic parameters. So what you can do is you create a speakers folder and name. You use a square brackets. Then this part is dynamic, right? And so. When you render a component with this component, uh, you get the parameters called like name equals to, it will match whatever is in the URL. Okay, so next is we have endpoints. So not just serving pages, because Svelkate runs on server side as well. It does server side rendering and also lets you build endpoints, API endpoints for users. So um, it's, it does the same, it is the same thing you, within the same folder. Um, you create API speakers, but over here, instead of .svelte as component, you create a TypeScript or JavaScript file over here. And now we want to get a speakers list, right? This is like API to get a list of speakers. So it's a get endpoint and then return us a list of speakers. So you go into this file, you export a function called get, and then you return an object with like status and body. Um, then this will return you a list of speakers. So if you try to visit this, API, then you get, get you whatever, in a response is whatever you have in the body. So, um, yeah, it, so Svelte supports all kinds of uh, different kind of um, HTTP request method. So a fun fact over here, right, this is something I just learned, uh, is that uh, HTTP request method name is case sensitive. Um, and it's just by convention, all of us just like to use uppercase. Um, so previously, like a previous Svelte kit beta version, all these are like lowercase um, because it's nicer to have a lowercase function name. But then, we, so we do some normalization and then we realize that actually 
case is sensitive in HTTP request name, so so we, we change them. So yeah, see breaking change. That's why I tell you that a lot of breaking changes happening in beta. <laughs> yeah. So next thing I want to talk about is uh, layouts. So you have like CDJS website. Uh, if you try to navigate, you realize that the top part is the same, right? You have this site and whatever inside over here. When you switch to different nav, it's, it's changing only the bottom part, right? Of course, you can create two different routes and you know uh, import the nav bar in both of the components, import the, um, the conference list, but you can have layouts. So how do you do layouts? You create a file called underscore underscore layout dot svelte in your routes folder, and in that folder you you have your nav, your con your your conference list, and then you have a slot element. So if you are familiar with svelte, slot element is where you can pass in like the children um, content, right? So yeah. So when you have this layout file, all the files or ch children files within a same folder of this layout, that's felt the same folder, all of them will use this layout. And sometimes, you know, what if I don't want to use this layout? I want to have a different layout. Then you can have name layouts. Uh, I think this is relatively new. So in name layouts, meaning you can have another layout file, but you dash the name, right? And then you, in within your page routes component, you can choose which layout you want. Right, if you don't like, so you add, add full to use that full layout. If you don't specify, then you will use a default layout, which is the one without the name. Right. Um, next, we're going to talk about is like loading data in Svelte Kit. In Svelte, we have this await block where you can await for a promise, and then when it resolves, you render something. Right. Simple, straightforward, but it does not work on the server side. Uh, because on the server side, we don't really wait for promises. It's asynchronous. When you do like the the Svelte render function in the server side, it's synchronous. So we don't wait for promises. So it does not work work on server side. And by default, you use fetch from the browser. So there's no caching, prefetching, or whatever, right? So in Svelte Kit, it provides load. Right? So if you're familiar with say I guess like Next.js, then probably that's like get static props or get server side rendering props, something like that, right? Uh, so this is similar. Um, so we have a load function, and then in that load function, you return object, right? So this can be synchronous, returns an object. Uh, we, we've, I think you see props over here, which means that within the same component, you can pass the props to that component. So we will go one pass to call the load, wait for that promise to be ready. Uh, get the data and then it renders that component on server side. Uh, one thing to note is that the fetch comes from the load function. Okay, uh, I will talk about that slightly later on. So what you get over here now is that if you are using just compare, like if you're using await, because it does not fetch on the server side. So your site when you load, it's it's empty. But if you're using load, we'll wait for the call the API, get data, render with the data, right? And then you, later on, if you try to look at the network tab for the asynchronous request. Uh, yeah, using a wait later on, because no data, right? Then you wait, you will await for that promise, you'll call that function, fetch data, so you'll see an API call. Uh, if you're using load, um, the load function will still call on the client side, right? Uh, especially also when you navigate to different pages, the load function will call, and it will call in the initial rendering as well. But we have already fetched that data, right? So Svelte actually will reuse that data that you already fetched on the server side, so it does not make another network request. So there's no new network request being made. All right, so that's where that fetch comes from. So if you're using that fetch provided from load, it actually has the same API as the fetch, the browser fetch API, but it does re return like cache response from the server side uh, in the client side when you do hydration. So there's no actual, it does not make another network request. And if you are fetching directly like to endpoints, right, you are making API calls to endpoints that you define within your spell kit, actually in the server side, you will call that function directly. So there's no network request being made from your server to the internet and then get back to your spell kit container and whatever. Right? So it just calls that function directly. So yeah, that's why you use that fetch function within the load that provided from the load function. So just another example that uh, we are in this speaker's 
we call a list of speakers, right? So you call fetch slash API slash speakers to get a list of speakers. So you have an endpoint and a component. Um, some, so it depends on how you want to define your APIs, right? You, maybe you always prefix this API. Um, so, but then we, we kind of know that this list of speakers is always being retrieved from the speakers list only, right? This is how your, your application, you always, always get the list of speakers from your component only. Then maybe you want to co-locate them. You want to put them together, right? You put, uh, sorry, this is your get endpoint get list of speakers. You want to put them together, right? Side by side, something like that, right? Um, in that case, Svelte Kit knows that this is actually, this endpoint is always being used by these routes. Then we call this endpoint a page endpoint, which means that if you are doing that, uh, when you visit your speaker's list, uh, we don't call, you don't need to write the load function. That you can throw away. You will, spell kit will load this endpoint, get the response, pass it to the props to pass to you, right? And yeah, on the server side. And even on the client side, when you navigate to a speaker's list, you, will, you don't have to write the load function. Everything is done for you in, in spell kit. Yeah, so that's about endpoints and loading data. So for navigation, right, we talk about routing, but how do you navigate from one page to another? Um, well, you just use an anchor tag, do this, and it just works, right? Um, yeah, so you don't have to import like a link component from somewhere, you just use anchor tag, right? So how that works is that SpellKit will intercept all the clicks events that's happening on the anchor tag, and it will yeah, use routing to navigate to them. Um, so when I see, can I see my mouse? Okay, never mind. So when you try to hover on the, this anchor tag, you probably want to click it, and you probably will run the load function to load it and stuff like that. But that split second between hovering and clicking, maybe you can start calling the function to load the data and stuff like that, right? So you want to do that, you want to do like prefetching. What you do is you can add an attribute called spell kit prefetch, and yeah, that's all handled for you. So we learn about roughly all, not all, but like rough idea of like how do you write code in SvelteKit. Next thing you want to do is to deploy. So to deploy, uh, you probably will want to deploy to cloud providers like C, Cloudflare, Netlify, Vercel, and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah, so what you do to build and deploy is you run npm run build to build a code and in, in your pipeline and to deploy them, right? So, but how, like you want write one app, but how do you make how do you make your output to looks like the format or like create a file that the cloud provider needs for you to deploy? Well, you do this thing called adapters. Uh, so we provide adapters like adapter for Cloudflare, Netlify, and Vercel. So remember the Svelte config here. You specify the adapter, right? So if you want to deploy a Cloudflare, you use the Cloudflare adapter. And then after it builds, it will transform the build output to fit whatever Cloudflare needs, like for Cloudflare pages. Yeah. And by default, I think just now what you see is the auto, right? So by default, if you use auto, it will detect from environment variables to know that where this build is happening. Is this in Vercel? Then I will just use the Vercel adapter. So all the three adapters that you saw just now, uh, if you use auto, it's just done automatically for you. But what if you want to just you don't want to use them. You want to deploy to say your digital ocean EC2, like your some node containers. What you do is you use adapter node. Um, yeah, just change that. Then after you build, you have a build folder, and then you just node build index.js or whatever you want to use to start your node process. And and that's it. So a bit of recap of what we have talked about. We kind of talked through like routing, uh, routes, endpoints, layouts loading data, navigation, and deploying. Um, there's, of course, there's a lot more about Cell Kit. There's a lot of cool features, especially for TypeScript. There's a lot of cool TypeScript support that, um, that's just like, very magical to me. Uh, but yeah, you can. Uh, that's it about Cell Kit and about my talk. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you.